Well, it's that time of year again. A time where the weather brings a whole range of magical feelings. From warmth from loved ones and family as they prepare for the Christmas celebration. A sense of fun and adventure as your entire backyard turns into some foreign new winter wonderland. A sense of eagerness as we wait for the new year to come. But winter brings another feeling for me. A somberness, almost sirene, as everything including time itself appears to stand still in this eerie limbo. Where you can stand outside and all you hear is your own breath. As if the entire world has disappeared around you, and you stand alone in this quiet slumber of existence. TOP 10 FAVORITE SNOW LEVELS IN VIDEO GAMES version. What can I say about this game that hasn't already been said? From its creative maps to its near-perfect controls. Well, what have I told you? I never played Mario Kart 64 until 2012. It's funny looking back, because I was raised on racing games. From Pod Racers to Diddy Kong Racing, Gran Turismo, and of course, Twisted Metal. That one counts, right? But our family never saw the reason to get Mario Kart, because my folks thought it would be a waste of money, since we already had Donkey Kong Racing. But last year I got my first laptop for Christmas, and I discovered the wonderful world of emulators, and I said, Hey, I wonder what that Mario Kart game was like. So I downloaded it, picked out my first track, and... Perfect controls! Amazing game mail! Precision accuracy! Production! Fight on thumbs up! Shut! Number nine. Wait, did did we talk about Sherbert Land? Uh, uh, it was awesome. Yeah. Didn't fall into the water. I'm the best. Number nine. For all the damage caused by the Star Wars prequels, there were a few gems that came out of the whole mess. One of them being racers, because calling the game Pod Racers would make just too much sense. It had speed, it had excitement, it had me at the edge of my seat trying not to slam into every wall and explode into a million pieces. One of my favorite tracks being the Haller Gorge. This mammoth of a track pulled every stunt to throw you off course, and still to this day, it is a challenge for me not to die as I speed through it. One of its most notable features being the giant cliff that throws you into a frozen lake where you slip and slide all over the place as you try to get back on track. Wait, how do pod racers slide on the ice if they're floating? Is that, is, that, is that a thing? Number 8. After awakening from a seven year slumber, the newly aged Link races through Hyrule to defeat the evil Ganondorf. But as he returns to the whimsical locations of his childhood, he soon realizes that the world he once knew is no more. Ganondorf already won the war, and the life Link used to know is all but a memory. Hyrule has been ransacked, the Gorons are imprisoned, and the Kokiri hide for their lives. One of the most eerie culture shocks for me was the Zora's Domain. This once bustling community, thriving with life, is now a winter wasteland where snow covers the ruins of an abandoned kingdom. With its inhabitants frozen under the ice, the shop doors blocked, and even Lord Jabu Jabu has disappeared, you soon realize that you are truly alone. As you make your way through Zora's Fountain, you'll find the Ice Cavern, a mini dungeon prepping you for the Water Temple. This small dungeon has challenging puzzles and unique enemies to overcome, but what stands out to me is the music. It capitalizes on the many feelings people get during the winter, as the stillness in the air gives time to reflect upon oneself. This area hit the nail on its head to evoke this seasonal melancholy feeling. So you're up late trying to go to bed, but it's too tempting to stay awake with the jittery excitement that is the night before Christmas. And if there ever was a level to bottle up all the feelings and excitement one would have, I can think of none better than Freezy Peak from Banjo-Kazooie. The goals are creative, fun, and unique, and it's got everything that I love from this holiday, like Christmas lights, sledding, presents, jingle bells, and snowmen. No! Not those snowmen! Not those snowmen! No back snowmen! Number 6. Kirby 64 is a simple little game that's easy to pick up and provides me a ton of fun. I get a huge nostalgic feeling when I play this game since it appealed to me when I was a kid. On your adventures, you'll end up at Shiver Star, a fun winter wonderland that gets more and more suspicious as the game moves along. It turns out that the population deserted this planet a long time ago and left behind a few artifacts of their culture. Shopping malls, robots, and factories still continue their work without their masters. And it's interesting to note that the planet resembles Earth. So, the natural conclusion one would draw is that this is the children's version of the day after tomorrow. Nailed it. Number 5. Is it funny that for a show I never watched, that the theme song is still drilled in my head thanks to one of my favorite NES games, 
DuckTales. You have to be particularly greedy to venture to the Himalayas, where you will risk your life battling the most evil monsters, such as... The Goat, The Bunny, Spiders, and the most vicious bloodthirsty villain of them all, The Hockey Player. But no, seriously, I have a blast playing this game and I am overjoyed to say that I love the remastered version even more than the game that I've owned longer than I've been alive. Wait, that makes no sense. Fortuna! Uh, I, I mean Facina. No, wait. No, wait, it is Facina. No, it's for... Let me see, I don't... I don't really know which one it's called. Star Fox 64 holds a momentous spot on my list. It was the first time I ever encountered the dastardly rogue team Star Wolf. After you're done shooting fish in a barrel, Rob tells you that in a last ditch effort, the enemy would rather sink their own ship than letting it go to you. So they planted an explosive that makes the Tsar bomb look like a dud. With no time to lose, you must defeat Star Wolf so Fox can fly in and defuse the bomb in time. Did anyone else find it odd that Fox was the one to defuse the bomb? I, I, mean, I mean, I know he's the leader and everything, but I thought it'd be slippy since he's kind of the tech guru. Now things are starting to heat up. Uh, I, I mean, cool down. There's, it's, it, they're cooling up. They're cool. Cool, cool mountain from Mario 64. This one seems to make it onto everybody's list, and for good reason. The tight controls and the cliffhanging challenges makes this level a blast. I'd be lying if I said I don't play this level every time I flip the game on. There's so many fun secrets hanging around, and you can never go wrong when your objective includes helping a snowman, returning a poor baby penguin, and racing a penguin. No, I ain't you stupid penguin! You cheat! You cheat! Number two. If you know me, then you know that I love GoldenEye, and you knew that that game would show up somewhere on this list. Being one of my favorite video games and movies of all time, this post-Cold War Bond story found a way to return to the Arctic war zone of Russia. Now you may have predicted that my favorite snow level would be the cold, eerie map of the surface, but my favorite pick is actually the runway. There's snow in it, that, that counts. This short level has Bond escaping from the chemical factory before it blows to high heaven, so you have to sprint down the runway and catch a flight while dodging hordes of bullets along the way. But what makes this level special is a little gift waiting for you that's parked on the side of the building. <laughs> I've never been more happy for infinitely respawning enemies, and I'd be happy doing this all day. I think the developers added this because the only other level you get to drive the tank is in St. Petersburg. But since that level you're racing against the clock, you can't really appreciate all the fun it has to provide. On the runway, you can have all the fun you want. And number one. Just kidding. Shadows of the Empire, to me, is as synonymous with Star Wars as the original movies. And it's in the first level that grabs my imagination, as you get to fight in the Battle of Hoth. This is kind of an Empire Strikes Back Part 2, and it had me shooting down probe droids, wrangling AT-ATs, and it made me feel that I was really fighting alongside with the Rebels against the Empire. Other games attempted to do it, but none of them gave me the grand scope of the battlefields as Shadows of the Empire. My dad brought this game home the same day he bought the Nintendo 64, and boy, I never saw anything like it. With its immersive story and great level design, it hooked me on the Star Wars bandwagon and I never got off. It was a little bit later that my parents found out I liked it so much, and they were like, Hey, Nick, would you like us to go buy the movies for you to watch? They make Star Wars movies? Thank you for watching this video, and if you want to see me geek out about other stuff, just go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Take care, have a great Christmas, and I'll see you next time.